Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today I'm going to take a look at how Man United can beat Liverpool. Remember to subscribe if you are new, smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. If this game was played on paper, you'd back Liverpool to come out on top. They are unbeaten this season despite facing two of the best sides in the country and have scored more goals than anyone else in the Premier League. Meanwhile, Manchester United's season is stuttering with no side picking up fewer points across the last three Premier League games. Despite this conflicting form, this is a massive fixture and either side could walk away with all three points. So today, I'm going to be taking a look at a few tactical tweaks that could see United pick up the win. This season, Liverpool have evolved under Jurgen Klopp, with their right-hand side seeing the biggest change. Trent Alexander-Arnold is taking up more inverted positions. The right central midfielder is more attacking, whilst Mo Salah is taking up a wider starting position. The left-hand side is largely the same, although like Salah, Sadio Mane is taking up slightly wider positions. There's also a bigger focus on creating passing diamonds around the man in possession. You could even describe Liverpool's new shape in possession as more of a four-box two, compared to in past seasons where it was more of a simple diamond. This new focus sees a lot more positional rotation, which poses new questions for the opposition, whilst a lot of Liverpool's old strengths remain. Take Liverpool's second goal against Atletico Madrid. Van Dijk in possession. He passes it to Robertson, who assesses his options. At this point, Liverpool's midfield has shifted over to create a diamond that will both allow them to recycle possession with ease as they outnumber Atletico's players on that flank, but also to break the Spaniards' lines with a diagonal pass into Milner. Robertson plays the pass and gets the return, halting on the touchline. To stop the progression, Atletico have pulled six players over to outnumber Liverpool, but the creation of diamonds allows Liverpool to recycle possession and work it to Trent, who's in acres of space in an inverted position. Under no pressure, Trent whips in a cross that's half cleared as Naby Keita smashes the ball home. This is the new look Liverpool, using diamonds to overload and recycle possession while still creating through their fullbacks but the positional rotation is also key. As Trent looks to cross, Salah is holding the width and creating a 1v1 with a wing back, pinning them in place whilst Keita is behind Atletico's midfield, unmarked and waiting for the second ball. Then when it comes, he lashes it home with his right foot. If that was Salah, like you'd see in Liverpool's old setup, Liverpool wouldn't score this particular type of goal. To stop Liverpool, United need to adopt a 5-2-3 defensive shape. Naturally, Liverpool's new shape sees their right central midfielder play higher than their left, so Fred needs to play on the left. His reaction to second balls is excellent, and would be more suited to getting back in to pressure Keita if we saw a repeat of his goal against Atletico. But this defensive structure would give a greater horizontal coverage, not just from the wing backs, but from the midfield three themselves, as the widest midfielders would join the wing backs and striker to press Liverpool's flanks, while still leaving two central midfielders to cover the central space. The split strikers would also offer a counter-attacking threat, which could stop Liverpool from committing attackers to overload United. Whilst when Liverpool are building from the back, the right central midfielder can shadow their DM, restricting Liverpool's central build-up and perhaps forcing them to play wide. The lower mid-block has shown its use against Liverpool already this season. Atletico should have taken a draw, whilst newly promoted Brentford and 10-man Chelsea managed to hold Liverpool off. This shape also naturally counters Liverpool's style of play. Klopp's high press works so well because of how narrow and compact Liverpool become when pressing a flank. Whilst this creates many chances for Liverpool, it also leaves them vulnerable to switches of play. The wing-backs in a back three or a back five offer natural width, meaning these switches are always on. This is something that United need to exploit. Using Luke Shaw and Aaron Wan-Bissaka as wing-backs with a midfield three from right to left of Fred McTominay and Bruno, will give United the best chance of stopping and exploiting Liverpool's shape. Shaw and Fred would naturally see more of the ball, dragging Liverpool over to that flank, whilst Wan-Bissaka's width would keep the switch on. If United could work it quickly out to him, Bruno Fernandes could be close to create chances. The biggest one would be the cross to the back post, where United could look to overload Trent Alexander-Arnold. Not the strongest in the air, the right back can be dominated. It's something that teams have looked to exploit this season. Brentford got a lot of joy by crossing from the right and stacking the back post. In fact, their second and third goals both came from these situations. But let's take the third. After the cross is cleared, Henry recovers possession. He finds Yanel as Brentford work it to the right wing back, Canos. Canos goes to Baptista, who crosses to the back post. 
At this point, Brentford have a three on two on the back post. Trent and Tony challenge, but miss the ball as Wisser manages to squeeze it past Allison. Whilst this was a bit of a scruffy goal, the intent is there and United can replicate this, working it from one side to the other through natural width and getting Fernandez on the ball in the inside right channel where he can deliver to the back post. And finally, the defensive security provided by the shape would allow Shaw to join both of United's strikers at the back post. Any of Greenwood, Rashford, Cavani or Ronaldo would give Trent a tough time or put the ball in the back of the net. If United revert back to the 3-4-1-2, they can not only get in an extra defender, allowing them to marshal Liverpool's attackers, freeing the wing backs up, to press the wide areas, notably switches to Liverpool's full backs and stopping Salah from cutting inside, this shape would also allow United to get Bruno into the starting 11 to create behind two split strikers. Then out of possession, the shape could either match up Liverpool's four box two, when they build out the back and it can drop into a 5-3-2 that has slowed Liverpool down with greater defensive width and a counter-attacking threat. Then in possession, the natural width of the wing backs would offer good out balls against Liverpool's narrow press, allowing United to freely switch the point of attack, ideally creating crossing situations from the right-hand side for Bruno Fernandes to deliver to the stacked back post. These tactics aren't a million miles away from Solskjaer's style of play, and if United can select the right 11, there's a good chance they can take all the points off Liverpool. But anyway, guys, what do you think? How would you beat Liverpool? How would you set up Manchester United? What's the tactics? What's the formations? Of course, get your score predictions in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Come on, United. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?